wondering why a person from Birmingham, Alabama is up here introducing Mr. Destiny. In the 70s, a dance company came down to Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, there was a woman in that company named Joan Finkelstein. I think she's in the audience tonight. I saw Joan Finkelstein dancing on stage, and she had a movement quality that was unlike most of the other dancers. I was very impressed with it. And after the performance, I had the opportunity to speak with her. And I asked Joan, I said, you, your back is so fluid. How in the world did you learn to dance like that? And the movement quality is so great. And she told me that she studied dance with a man named Jean Leon Destiny. Well, little did I know at the time that I would be coming to New York and that I would find Mr. Destiny and I would study with him myself and that uh, he would do great works on my behalf it would, among students that I taught. So, uh, Mr. Des meeting him has led to an arts partnership in the schools that I've worked in. I uh, taught at Martin Luther King High School for many years, and in 1997, Mr. received uh, with the New York City Opera and Martin Luther King High School a prestigious arts award, the Annenberg Challenge for the Arts and Education Grant. And he was able to do that because for years he had been coming into the school running workshops with the students. One thing the King High School students knew, they knew about Haiti. They knew about Haitian culture because Mr. Destiny was there every September for about two months working with the students that they loved it. So uh, his work intensified and the appreciation for his work grew. After the Annenberg grant, I, I left New York the last year of that grant, and Mr. Destiny carried on with it with a lot of conviction and a lot of success. Uh, he came down when I, when I left. I went to Florida a and University, and he actually came there two or three times to work with the students, and they also fell in love with him. Later, you're going to see, well, you see now, uh, clips of him working with students from Florida and and teaching them one of his uh, well-known dances, Val Chappet. And they and the audience loved it. These are, of course, just examples of the extensive work that Mr. Destiny has done on many levels. He's been spreading the word on the intensity and beauty of Haitian culture. <laughs>
Anita, réveillez-moi. C'est la dame de Anita, réveillez-moi. C'est la dame de Anita, réveillez-moi là.
early age, I was always fascinated by the beat of the mysterious drumming calls coming from the nearby hills of St. Mark, my native town, where I attended the Catholic elementary school. During one summer vacation, my mother took me to a place called Ponsonde, where for the first time I saw the peasants dance with the beat of the drums. Later, my parents enrolled me at the Lycée Pétion in Pétionville in port au -Prince. Although away from St. Mark, my imagination was still captivated by the beat of the drums. Since then, I knew that inevitably I had to dance. I was hope I had the bug, as they say. <laughs> at that time in Haiti, dance, voodoo ceremonies practiced by the natives, the real people were considered by the so-called elite class as savagery. <laughs> Therefore, imagine the ostracism to which a young man would be exposed <laughs> if these high-class people knew that he was more interested in voodoo dances than in classical studies. <clears throat> in port au I was introduced to Madame Lina Maton Blanchet, who was going to guide me towards an international career. Madame Lina Maton Blanchet, a talented pianist, a, was a gifted teacher. Soon she organized a choir with young men and women in order to introduce us to the folkloric songs and dances she harmonized. However, the Haitian governments and the Catholic Church anti-voodoo, anti-folklore campaign was in full swing. Therefore, recruiting young people to sing and dance at the beat of the drums was not an easy start. Task, task. Madame Blanchet was not all discouraged. As she patiently, moreover, it was not enough for her to teach us in her studio how to dance and sing. She wanted to expose us to the very essence of the folklore. Thus, one Saturday evening, she took a few of us, four boys, to a ceremony in the art school of Polo Prince. What a venture! What an exciting! For me, who had never seen anything like that, the monk who well respected in her community received us graciously. Her assistant told us about the rituals to observe. We followed the instructions to the letter, but not without some fright. Madame Blanchet's objective was to allow us to observe on the spot the roots of the land, the peasant spontaneity, and their rhythmic movements. Upon her return home, Madame Blanchet would harmonize the melody she collected in an artistic form, more in tune with the listening habit of those people still hostile to Fudu. During the ceremony, an old woman jumped from her chair to the center of the peristyle, the temple. She was possessed by a spirit the wood, but, but the In spite of her advanced age, she danced with surprising agility. Later, at the Institute of Entology, uh, this, I learned that this woman was possessed by Dambala and was dancing the Yambalu, one of the most symbolic dances characterized by the undulatory movement of the snake. The essential harmony that derives from this movement is in perfect accord with the symbol of the two deities on the right and right, Agwe and Dambala Wedo, to which this dance is attached. The drum, song, and dance of the ceremony were crowding my head, and timidly, with faint movements, I was imitating the participants. Conscientious of the terror, the forbidden fruits inspired me. I was seeing myself already before the good father. 
accusing me of my sin for participating in a Buddhist spectacle. Suddenly, a policeman came up, arrested all of us, and took us to the nearest police station. Shaking all over, I already saw myself in a prison cell. However, Madame Blanchet calmly gave us the assurance that everything will be all right. After a few minutes that seemed hours to me, a police sergeant came in to give us a sermon to remind us that such diabolic ceremonies were not legal, were legally forbidden and we should not participate in them anymore. He let us go. Nevertheless, we continue to practice at Madame Blanchet's studio. One time we were attacked with rocks that forced us to run for cover through the back gate. Apparently the neighbors did not appreciate the sound beat of the drums. Later, agreeable surprise, our little group was invited to represent Haiti at a great folkloric festival in Washington, D.C. The performance was at the Constitution Hall of the Doctor of American Revolution, where access was forbidden to colored artists, and even the celebrated contralto, Marian Anderson, who were, not, who were therefore the first blacks to be admitted there. Although we had to enter by the dog back door, our representation were very successful and the, the, the eulogistic critics of the Washington press had their echo in Haiti. Before leaving Washington, newly elected President Eli Lesko offered a beautiful reception for us at the Haitian Embassy and made a warm complimentary speech. And our chief drummer, named Fernvier, asked Madame Locher's permission to say a few words. Fernvier thanked the president and naively asked him for a souvenir, something to show in Haiti proof that folkloric drummers and dancers so much depreciated in their country are recognized as great artists in foreign lands. Surprised by so much self-assurance, such a plan, the president gave Jean-Vier a medallion. The assistants applauded enthusiastically. Many years later, I received a call in New York where I had established my residency, inviting me to come to Haiti on the contract to organize and direct the first national photo retreat for the bicentennial of Photo Pence celebration. The call was from the private secretary of Mr. Jumasse Estime, the president of Haiti. Once more, I had the great privilege to work with Madame Roche, as I as director of the national troupe and her as the music and song director. Our collaboration was perfectly harmonious I recognize in her the extraordinary professor who more than anyone else had paved my way, had paved the way to my long and beautiful artistic career. Much later in New York one night, the CBS featured a performance of my dance company. A few minutes later, the phone rang. It was when Arena Machon Rochelle, fortunately by chance, had seen the show. With an emotion-filled voice, she complimented, complimented me and told me how proud she was to have had me as a student. I could hardly hold my tears. Unfortunately, she's no more with us. Before the beauty of her spirit and the goodness of her heart, I humbly tell her again my affection and my gratitude. <laughs>